interesting uh, topics called business acumen. Uh, just raise your hand. How many of you really from technical background uh, versus the business background? How many from you is technical background first? I'm sure that Microsoft team, you can raise the hand, right? Are we? Yes, yes. If you look at the participants list, you can see those who have raised their hands. Very good. How many of you is actually uh, from the business or financial background? Wow, OK. I think pretty balanced, right? I would say. Good. Uh, just curious slightly uh, about myself, uh, you know, uh, thanks for Nikita that you explained. I actually started my career in the technical uh, area. I studied WE from USM. So I moved to the business side uh, after working for Intel for a couple of years. And initially when I stepped into the, my role, I said, hey, technical people, why should we know about business? Why should we know about this business acumen? Isn't it that uh, we could really contribute technically is really important. Uh, that is for my role. So if you think of that, uh, that may be initially is that technicals that, that business should not be decoupled. Even though you may study uh, in a different discipline, it's still related to each other. So I strongly encourage uh, all of you to really, really look into how you can contribute from technical point of view to the business as well and vice versa. So I quickly picked the Wikipedia uh, you know, definition. So when you look at that, business uh, acumen, oh, before that, I think it's too fast already. Why not uh, another quiz for all of you? Uh, how, how many of you think, what is the definition of the business acumen? Give me one second to type it. What do you think, what is business acumen? Okay, so if you do a quick search on the Wikipedia, right? Uh, you know, business acumen is sometimes people can interchange, they call it business savvy or business sense and so on. I highlighted the key important words over here. It's the people that really, when this is a skill that really able to, the people that are able to deal with the business situation, whether it's a risk, whether it's an opportunity. And ultimate goal is to improve your financial performance or organization or even personally as a leadership development. And it's really important that this business acumen sense skill will be able to help you develop what is the future trend that will look like for a certain, whether it's for your company, for your product, for your even yourself. Okay, so let me move it. Uh, before I move further, I'd like to share with you that I get this uh, video from the YouTube that is really kind of well explained. Have you ever found yourself in one of these situations? You're talking with a senior leader of your company and wish you could say something really insightful to show your knowledge of the business, but your brain goes numb and you can't come up with anything meaningful. You're attending a meeting and as they start reviewing financial statements, you get lost. You hope no one discovers that the smile on your face or the nod of your head hides the gap in your knowledge. Besides, you can't see what the numbers have to do with what you have to get done today or this week. If you've experienced moments like these, you're a member of a fairly large group, business people who are in business, but don't necessarily get business. You see, while most employees understand their function, for example, they know their responsibilities as an IT professional, or they're really smart when it comes to managing operations. The fact is, 90% of employees don't understand important business measures. And those who do have a hard time explaining the numbers to those who don't. This leads to organizations that feel disconnected, departments that make uninformed business decisions, managers who shy away from making important business decisions, and employees who slow down the decision-making process because they don't want to make the wrong choice. CEOs dread this kind of stuff. The solution is building your business acumen, becoming an employee who can see the big picture without losing sight of the details who can cut through complexity and conquer uncertainty, someone who consistently makes the right strategic bets to deliver clear and measurable results. Okay, great. Uh, hope, have you ever found yourself in one of... So basically that, you know, have you hope that uh, really kind of understand that the context of what actually uh, important for the business uh, acumen I just mentioned, right? Even your technical people, you have to really understand what the business number looks like. And what is, uh, you know, 
uh, when you click talk about that in the future, when you step into the work, <clears throat> your financials uh, team that update that, even your senior leader talking about the business update and so on, you know what is your <coughs> company is trending to. Thanks for the video for Accumulate Learning that you can really search for the in the YouTube, you can actually watch that. So let me move further about some of the definition of business acumen. So you see the word, the three words over here, ask. Okay. So yeah, asking is important, but this is not what I mean here. So let me go through it. What is ask over here that I want to share with you. The first A kind of representing your ability to wait with the ambiguity and also ability to link with the cause and the effect. Why is it so important? You know, in many cases, uh, it's kind of impossible to know everything related to a situation. Just like we talk about business government is about the business uh, situation as well, right? So each individual must decide when the information is available is sufficient for you to make a decision to make a kind of decision to move forward. That is your ability to, uh, to deal with the ambiguity. Uh, how about the ability to link the cause and effect? You know, both in this uh, financial sense. So what if a product of your company, they say, hey, uh, why don't we just discount 10% so that we can get even more sales in? However, do you know that that 10% discount means whether you still continue to make a profit or not for your product? And in a personal sense, if you don't complete this podcast kind of accurately, I'm sure your company management will not secure the resources that you require to, for you to support you to go, you know, uh, to, to develop uh, if you are handling a technical uh, team. So this ability is really important as part of the pieces for your business acumen. So next, the S represent skill. You know, the self awareness is really important. It can reflect that how will an individual's action and the decision impact on the organization and also the other people that are uh, joining you. Because when you work in kind of step up into the big company, right? Whatever work that you're doing is not affect yourself, but also your team, but maybe it could be an organization or could be also entire organization. So this scale of self awareness is really important for you in part of the puzzle for the business human. Another one is called stakeholder awareness. So what does it mean over here? It's, it's actually reflected how will an individual action and decision impact and, uh, uh, you know, uh, sorry, uh, what are the stakeholders that your decision will make that will impact over there? What are the stakeholder interests and their needs? And how does your decision making with this, uh, within this organization kind of impact upon them? Because if you are working in a big company that you, know, you are to really work for the key stakeholder is your actual shareholder, for example. So shareholder were looking at you, hey, how your decision and your planning will really impact your future investment. Similarly for all the key stakeholders. So uh, let me summarize that the stakeholder is where your, uh, you know, direct management superior and so on. It could be even also your, you know, shareholder as well. So the last piece of the business acumen capability is a K. The K here represents the knowledge that you have. So first of all, I think the knowledge that is really important for you to master in the business acumen it's called financial uh, literacy. This ability is to understand how an organization uses its resources to achieve its desired outcome. I mean, in a commercial context perspective, this often measure in terms of profit of the revenue. In other organization, the key measure of the success might be in how do they, do they improve the capacity or measure the social benefit and so on. So it depends on how uh, the context that you are in. It's not always only the numbers. The other one is the contextual uh, knowledge that uh, really important that to contribute to your overall knowledge. Now involve how that you're looking at the wider external landscape instead of only looking into your internal team members itself. So for your immediate supervisor, 
it means that knowing about the changes happening between their own organization. So these are very important because that whatever you know, you should not be can limit your knowledge between your own organization or your individual yourself, but also should cover what is the environment kind of really happening beyond you. So the other one, you move up to the you know higher ladder perspective. You look at the organization, organ, oh, sorry, sorry for that organization's knowledge. So this knowledge is about the organization in which the individual or you yourself working within or inside that. So what are the relevant procedure and the process that for your organization? What are the culture and the within your organization? How can you really get the thing done within your organization? So these three, you know, knowledge combined will actually form the knowledge. So with this ASK, basically you are forming a business acumen. Sounds simple, right? So we are done for the day. Hopefully not yet. So I'm going to walk you through in the next uh, maybe uh, 20 minutes about uh, some of the example about how do we apply this, uh, you know, business acumen over here. We just ask model ability, the skill and the knowledge. So before I move to example, I also want to give you some of the context about what is the difference between the business knowledge versus the business acumen. And which one comes first, basically? In fact, both of them are really important. And the outcome could be a different, but the, both of them are really uh, important context to contribute to the model just now we talk about the arts, right? So we take an example like, you know, we talk about business knowledge just now, like it's financial literacy. However, the business acumen output or result or the outcome, if you have the business acumen, is how you're able to internalize your knowledge to become financial insight. I'll give you an example. You know, I, I used to be, uh, you know, like to quote what my grandmother, uh, you know, always kind of like to tell me. If you read the book, the book contains inside a lot of data. So from the data, if you start to read the book, it becomes the information to you personally. However, if you don't internalize it and use it, uh, apply it, your information will, be not, will not become your insight or your intelligence. So that business outcome is similar here, analogy. You can gather a lot of data, a lot of information, but if you don't internalize it, you don't practice it, you don't really uh, use certain tools to assist you to apply this business acumen skill, you will not be able to turn the data or information to become your intelligence. Okay, I like to always take this uh, as a use uh, example of, uh, you know, um, on the business human perspective. How many of you born uh, before year 2000? I guess, Nikki, most of them born after two, 2000, year 2000, right? They are still study, right? Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm sure all of you know about who is Apple, right? But do you know that Apple developed a lot of product even before you born, which is starting from 1980 and uh, 20 years before you born. There's a lot of product they have actually introduced to the market. You can see the line, it's very flat, right? In other words, that there's a lot of product have been developed and go to the market. Some of them very famous ones like Macintosh. You haven't heard about that, if your house got one. I still remember in 1998, right? It came up the first iMac, the big colorful monitor with a built-in computer. Wow, that is really, really impressive. But you look at that, you know, the number is not really penetrated to the market uh, very well. And when until there's after they launch the first iPhone, you can see the line is actually moving out very fast. Uh, I'm not sure I can draw on the chart. But if you look at year 2000, they first introduced one of the product, uh, you know, uh, before the iPod, they actually uh, call uh, personal, person, PDA, person development, personal assistant, I think. I can't remember the full term of that, the PDA. It's kind of similar to, the, you know, our, our iPad or even a small iPad or iPod, uh, so-called iPod at that time, but it's all 
only in green color, only can key in the tax perspective. So until they really in two years, 2001, they first introduced the iPod. They changed the company, they turned the company around. And it take them about five years. You can see that the, 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 their chart is going up, like, you know, really go into the majority into the market. So if you are stepping into that time, if you're born in 1990s or 1980s, would you be able to foresee this is coming in the next 10 or 20 years? At the time, why that your, your product is have been introduced to the market, but it's not really able to take up as what you have seen in year 2007, eight by Apple itself. That is how you translate all this business acumen into the analysis perspective. Let me take another something is closer to you. If you look at this chart perspective, I'm sure that you all study, right? Uh, in usually when I study in a primary and secondary school, we, we used to use the grid board, right? Then after that, they change to the white board. Then we have a projector, transparency. I'm not sure you, you knew still do you stay using transparency? Yes, no? Wow, you are still using transparency? If you're not, you can actually ask your lecturer, have you seen your transparency? They will, they will give, bring up some of the old stuff and show you. Then in 1980s, the projector coming in and replace the all this transparency and then after that they have a whiteboard interactive one replacing and here today in 2020 a lot of school classroom have been replaced with a big tv that interactive one why what is triggering this what is the involvement of this one if you are developing a product you are technically why actually want to really develop all this evolving product what is triggering that that you have to ask yourself that's part of your sensing about what is coming next? And what is the opportunity over here? Of course, what is the risk when we develop all this product? What if the market doesn't really take off and doesn't really accept it? These are very important. You know, because of the poll, because of the pandemic, most of the school have been going into the hybrid mode. People that, some companies are taking the opportunity to translate, you know, hey, if the school, half class in the classroom face-to-face, -face, half class is actually online, what can you do? The teacher cannot do two sides at the same time. But if you have a digital interactive whiteboard, that is opportunity come. The teacher can do the teaching on the class, inside the class, and also on the online as well. So that is kind of a opportunity you can capture because of you have, if you have the best, good business acumen perspective. So these are the two examples I like to kind of quote. Um, next, will you ask me that, hey, you know, is this a business acumen born with me or can I train it or can I really learn it? Can I really study it? There's no right and wrong answer. So what I would like to really show you are some of the tools and the templates that you can use to kind of trigger your thought process to answer the template just now we talked about that. The us, the three elements. Your ability, you know, and uh, you know, and the skill and the knowledge perspective, right? So these are the sum of these uh, marketing tools we always use or business tools that we use to trigger some of the strategic thought process. Because all this thought process will be able to help you to trigger some of the good questions so that you can answer that, that to contribute to your knowledge and the skill. They also can help you to kind of sharpen up your ability to really foresee what is actually cause and effect as well. First of all, I think I'd like to uh, really look into like doing the environmental analysis model scanning, which is very popular. No matter what you have, I'm gonna go through all this uh, chart over here. By the way, these are all contain a uh, majority of the popular tools that you can help you to sharpen your business equipment skill. Um, but I, we may not have a time to go through all, but this is the page that you should take home that to help you to develop if you are really interested. We are done almost, right? Halfway through. So let's first look at this uh, Porter uh, Nine Forces. You know, you can of, of course that read more through this uh, Michael Porter books. Um, if you look at Porter, why is so important? Because that that really give you to, just now we talk about that, right? You need to know not only within your own organization. You need to know what really may force you, you know, out of the business or out of this uh, triggering you to change your company direction. And who are, could be your substitute one day, right? 
So, and if you look at that, there are still few other uh, kind of forces that have been added on top of what Michael uh, really put that in. Example like channels, complementers, technology change, regulation standard, and so on. That's how we take example of the Apple perspective, right? So it did take so many years to develop the market. Sometimes a product has been introduced to the market doesn't mean that it will be accepted by the market. Sometimes because the environment is not ready at this point of time. So some of the technology is not ready at the time. Just, just for example, if you're going to introduce, uh, let's say take example 6G, sixth generation of the cellular technology into the market today, will that happen? If you are the startup company that develops 6G, well, it could take 20 years later that the product only able to be accepted by, you know, the company, uh, you know, most of the country. Why? Because that uh, there's a lot of factors. It's not about the technology itself because the infrastructure are not ready yet. The technology that you develop on 6G, because 5G is not even ready yet. The infrastructure that would depend a lot of telco, the government regulations that impact that. And also could be your supply is not ready and a lot, a lot of factors over here. So you need to really understand what are the factors that really impact, kind of affect you. Uh, you know, I like to kind of sometimes or, or give some of the uh, example, but maybe there's a lot of uh, time consuming. Uh, maybe it's constraint. Let, let me move on on other model before uh, we talk about others. If there's time, I will give you some more example. So, if after doing the, there's other models besides the portal, right? You know, inflection point, uh, ecosystem environment, and so on, will really help you to do this environmental analysis model. Uh, but if you want to look into some of the advancing adoption model, still remember just now the graph of this uh, Apple, right? It takes about 1990 to 2001 for starting that the curve is moving up. It just like looks familiar, looks sounds like this curve, right? On the yellow and the green. Some of the product they introduce, it never really take off at all. And they are now in this uh, early majority area. So you can see the graph is really mapping to this theory. If you are this, uh, you know, the, you are the technologist guy, right? So you definitely love some of the new product. So what you introduce to the market, it could be only accepted by the innovators. People sometimes they like to call it, you know, the techies. La. You know, I still remember in year 2003, right? When the first uh, iPhone, uh, Apple introduced his first iPhone. Everyone is dying to get the, this, uh, not everyone, uh, all the techies uh, and innovators were really dying to go and get the first generation of the iPhone. I also get one. Very costly, by the way. So even though it's not working perfectly, I still remember, you know, I have to really flash update the firmware itself because it's too many bugs and it doesn't even the boot out. But I still feel satisfied. It's so cool. It's a so cool factor that we're really going to show that. So this is a kind of kind of the natural uh, behavior or no attitude of this techies. However, if your company product is only focused on the techies. You won't be able to cross to the next stage to even capture more customer. So you have to capture the early adopters. But early adopters really depends on some of the command from the techies, right? And then you move on to the early majority. It means the majority of people will continue to see, oh, it's so good. The effect will be coming in and a lot of people are going to adopt that. That will really help you to get in the pool of early majority. So your strategy, your business acumen, will give you the understanding that what you need to do to target a different set in time of the different type of the category of the people. Uh, of course, that you can see the red color leggers, those people that you, you should not even spend time to, to really look into that. These are the people that I will say today example, right? You, have you any, have any of you still seen that people don't take the handphone one? Because they're afraid of the, you know, the radiation and everything, or oh, they are. so. Or before they, they, they have not only radiation, but they, they have a lot of other concerns because they don't want people to contact them and so on, right? Uh, so these are all we call it a, a leggers uh, uh, behind. So it depends on strategy, who you wanted to target to. Some people don't like to use the smartphone. Then some people just want to use uh, you know, the feature phone. 
because that they are not allowed to turn on the, the camera and so on. So that you have to really understand who are you really targeting at, right? So you have to address their pain point. You have to address their concern so that you have to be able to introduce your product into the right place to the right people. That's the better. It doesn't mean that they are good or bad because of their concern, right? It's just that you have to really address the pain point. So let me move back a little bit. So there's another model we call it uh, crossing the chasm. Uh, just now we talk about, you know, some of the product that, you know, uh, you, you, you look at that, right? Some of the product that you you take a long time to introduce a market and we call it the early markets, right? So how are you able to help, you know, to penetrate, to make sure that you cross to the mainstream market, I would say. The mainstream market is really important because there is majority of chunk of your uh, business will really depends on. So because the economy of skills, because of all this uh, revenue were coming into the mainstream, it's really important to capture that. So, or else your product will be discontinued after a while. So early markets, if you don't cross this chasm, you will be disappeared from the market. So let's take an example about, anyone of you can think of a cool product that introduced to the market, but just a short while, it kind of disappeared. It's already no longer there anymore. Anyone have any good product? Google Glasses. Wow, very good. Okay. Uh, like, Sorry, I don't have a price for you. <laughs> okay, yes, it's very cool. They only capture a certain product uh, of the market, the early adopters, the innovators or early uh, adopters only. But they're not really crossing the uh, market. There's a lot of reason I just mentioned, right? Um, you know, some technology were people that would not be able to adopt because there's only multi uh, kind of reason. That's how I, I just explained, right? Some don't feel comfortable, some because of privacy, some could be radiation, some could be, you know, uh, you know, environmental, some, there's many, many reasons, or maybe could be cost, could be, you know, um, you know, the price, affordability, and many, many, many reasons. So we have to address what is the problem that why it cannot really cross the cases. Okay, very good example. And then the another models that uh, I like to really, especially if you're more on technical uh, team, right? Uh, this is uh, partly also come from the solution of the crossing the chasm. You want to read more, there's books over there on the right hand side. So you don't always think of, I could develop the best technology in the world uh, to, uh, you know, hardware or software only, or peripheral. Oh, I have very good features on the peripherals. I have very good uh, you know, features on connectivity. That could be also only part of the solution of the product that why people are really wanted to buy. And to be a very good uh, business acumen, you have to look at the whole picture on this circle over here, uh, including that, how is your post, uh, like I just mentioned, right? Some people may concern what is the post sales support? What is the pre sales support rather than the product or feature coolness of it? Some of the, you know, they want to be backward compatible, like legacy interface. Some are really, really consulting, uh, you know, to do that. No, I give an example, right? So if you are developed, you remember that how many of you have seen uh, uh, magnetic tape audio? Anyone raise their hand? Have you seen a magnetic tape? You know, very cool one. You can turn out using the pencil, pull out the, you know, the magnetic one. Uh, I wish I can show you here. La. If I'm in the physical class, I will show you. Nikki, have you seen that before? Manicure yes, tape? of course. <laughs> okay. I'm sure there are youngsters who haven't seen that. Then, I'm sure. It takes some time to market to accept the CD, the round shape CD. Remember that? The audio CD, VCD. I'm not sure they have seen that or not. <laughs> so then, become a DVD. So, be transition from this magnetic tape to the CD format, it takes some time because I still have a legacy player, you know. How do I throw it away? So some uh, company, uh, very innovative, they kind of flat. So the DVD 
player will come out, then he say, hey, I'm compatible, backward compatible with the VCD. So the adoption market is very short, very fast in terms of product life cycle. And now, anyone still buy DVD uh, this nowadays? I cannot see uh, your chat. Uh. So anyone uh, have uh, uh, seen this, uh, still buying the DVD player and DVD? Then they come out Blu-ray, by the way. The Blu-ray come out, but not many. It's actually the adoption is really go up to the next stage. Why? Some people will think that, hey, I just need to keep on enhancing from VCD capacity to quality DVD capacity to even better quality of the video and capacity to become a Blu-ray. But Blu-ray have been introduced to the market, but don't really capture the storm the market very well. Why? Anyone typing? I cannot see who is typing, by the way. <laughs> Anyone typing? Why? Anyone seen the Blu-ray player? I'm sure you still seen in the market, right? Nation says the Blu-ray is too expensive. <laughs> and it's also because of the timing. Internet has been introduced to the world. And in the past, do you know that how long I need to send an email just as big as 500k byte or one meg? Take me, uh, if I go to take a coffee, come back, the email cannot even send out yet 20 years ago. And today, it's so easy. Even download. Last time I want to download one megabyte file, it takes me a few hours, you know. Right now, you want to download one gigabyte, how long it takes? Very fast. In that kind of situation, would you still buy, would you be still really doing the uh, Blu-ray, 4 gig, 8 gig, 16 gig data, not required because you can even download so fast because the other factor that impacting you, that you know the world have been changing to internet, you can do that. The broadband can be doing so fast that uh, kind of replacing you know the video quality. It can support you know last time you never imagine HD quality. I say hey, we got the HD content. Now you got 4K content. Now you're going to have 8K content. So the, the evolving that actually changing outside the world will force you to really do think about that. Okay, let me give you another example that a company that's doing very well for this whole product concept, nothing to do with technology. Have you heard about BMW? Car, okay. So 30, 40 years ago, you know, uh, when BMW, they're driving, you know, uh, uh, you know, this uh, introduced their first car, you know, the car that, you know, that sport car that you have the light that come out, tick 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 like that one, the two light in front, or oh, very in one, you know, that time. And now no, you don't see the light come out like that anymore. Lah. So that time to really kind of push that for that, you know what they do? Wow, it's so cool that they introduce a concept called car club. You know, the other car that having the BMW drive opposite you, there's a button that inside this car looks like this circle. You press the circle, the two eye will come out and flash it. See, that become it create a link between car to car. All prestige of BMW drivers. That is the same level button, uh, BMW logo button like this, the round shape. So they create a car club. It's not about the car alone, but they create another prestige complementary service, which is a car club. So I hope that that gives you some of the example that how uh, you know, a product that be successful into the market is not necessarily about how good is your technology only. And the last one, the competitive strategy uh, model. Uh, I wish you go through all the model, but I may not have time. But let me pick one or two only. So what are Roger models that I, I like always to take that? I hope I still have some time to give you some example. The relative advantage, right? You know, when you introduce some of the innovation, it have to be supersede some of the idea that really did. Just like I talk about the tape, right? And the CD and the VCD, and now you can do digital content. So there's a, some advantage that's moving. People will adopt that. Have you all, any of you really still have a film camera? Film camera? No, you have? I'm sure you have, right, Nikki? The film camera audition, you should Sorry, have. Sorry, Tada. <laughs> tada, I, my house got one. That one is what the reality event. You take a photo, you don't even know what you are taking. <laughs> yes. <laughs> After you develop the photo, come out, oh yeah, where is my head? I only take that photo, capture on my leg only. 
see, too late already. And now you have a digital camera. And digital camera also a okay, midpoint only. Now everybody use a phone to do that as a camera. So there's a relative advantage you need to really think of yourself. Environment will really changing and forcing you. And compatibility perspective, when you develop a business sense uh, over there, you need to think about the compatibility. Sometimes people will still think that, you know, compatibility because you need to address the concern of just now we talk about that, right? Some of the late majority leggers or early majority, right? Hey, is this compatible or no? It's not compatible. My past experience will tell me no, better not yet. Especially you want to move it to the early majority, late majority. If it's not compatible, I don't want. Sometimes you still buy a phone and say, hey, if I buy this from uh, model A to model B, uh, how do I go and move my data and content around my contacts, everything? If it's not compatible, I don't want it. Really. So that is also sometimes you have to really think of that as well. The last one, complexity. Have you ever think of buying a smartphone? If I ask you, please go and read these 300 pages of menu before you can operate your smartphone. Would you buy or not? I'm sure Nikki will buy that. I don't read manuals. That's the problem. Oh, you see. <laughs> you don't really force the people to read the 300 pages before you can operate your things. Even your technically sounds very good. You have a lot of technical before you put it there. But it's too complex. People are looking for how can you make ease of use that to really adopt all this model. And trialability perspective, right? You have to be able people to really try that. If you don't try that, you know, most of the time people don't really uh, appreciate that. So people, let's say people the, the ask you to, hey, please try it, uh, test drive my car. For ladies, for example, when you walk into the mall, they will say, hey, oh, my perfume very nice, please try that. Free sample. That is called tradability. And last but not least, observability, right? Sometimes when you develop a technology product, you have to have business sense that, hey, sometimes technology very good, but you cannot see it, you know? You have to be able, be able to see the coolness of it. You know why I bought the takeoff, you know, in year 2001, as I just mentioned, it's so cool. You see, the, there's a button, round shape one, you can turn, 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 turn like that one. Nobody have any turn that time. Everyone also have a feature phone only, only a keypad only. Only that one have a button only, you know. That make so obvious that, hey, so cool. So I hope that that kind of give you a perspective that Technology, yes, important, technically important. You also have to understand the in business sense. I will not go through this, the rest of the part of analysis like SWOT, BCG. I'm sure that your, your, your school have teach you a lot about this one. But one of this one, I like to call it out because not many people are doing that. It's called Anson metrics. So why the business acumen is really important? You don't think of your product only, but you also need to think about the market that you want to penetrate. Just how we talk about, you know, product life cycle. Which market, which product, you know, at the point of time that you wanted to really focus? Is it existing market? With your existing product, with your existing product into the new market so that you have to put into the effort of do the market development. So sometimes a product can be developed into a new market because of the new needs itself. However, some may not. You have to develop some new product to target, especially if you are the entrepreneur, you are the new player, you want to really target the present market and you need to develop a new product for that. And, and worse is like, sometimes you need to develop a new product into the new market, then non exist one. Oh, that is called diversification. But that will take a lot of resource. So you have to think, if you are, have a business agreement, will my company organization able to support me, to give me millions of dollars to develop a product? to target a, a new market, very high risk. So business acumen, you talk about the risk and the opportunity as, as a balance, right? So these are one of the good tools that you, you can consider if you really want to apply. So uh, hence, uh, I think all this model will help you to sharpen up and ask yourself, triggering you um, whether you have the right answer, you know, whether you have the right sense the right question i think is more important always ask yourself so that you make sure that you can cover a different every expert so that you can sharpen your business acumen then with all the things that you have developed you have getting uh, all the question all the answer maybe you don't have all the full answer yet but it's fine you can put everything into you know the business plan so in into a model or a business plan 
so that everybody can read your mind, understanding, uh, kind of uh, able to support each other or even give you continue the feedback uh, for the further improvement. So I will not go through here. I'm sure most of you already know what business plan looks like, but it's really important. It's a blank sheet. The most important is the content. So the business acumen is very important skill for you to develop. After you develop, make sure you, you, you can actually contribute that, document that into your business plan. Okay. Uh, last but not least, after you have this uh, business plan, you know, if you want to continue to sharpen your skill uh, through the talk today, right? Uh, I strongly encourage you to go and read the book called The Business Human Handbook. Uh, it sounds handbook, right? <laughs> so there's a lot of insight here. You can help you to uh, sharpen your business acumen and also continue to learn uh, how do you analyze things strategically, building the relationship. Just now remember internal, external stakeholder and so that you can kind of develop your competitive advantage using them all the different uh, uh, business tools and template to help you to create a new value proposition for your company. And last but not least, you know, you can really build up this capability by yourself. So let me conclude that. Remember, I talk about three elements very important for uh, business acumen. A, S, E, us. Okay. So remember what is that A, S, E stand for? Anyone typing? A stand for? Ability. Good. S? Skills. Good. K? Knowledge. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the day that's spending the, you know, 40 minutes, uh, one hour with us. I uh, still have 15 minutes left. I, I know that Vicky and Nixon would like to have some of the uh, games with you, right, Nixon? Yes, yes. Uh, and uh, I think my system is a bit more stable today. So hopefully that goes well. Uh, I, uh, I will run a Kahoot game. So let me share my screen uh, in a while. Uh, top three winners of the Kahoot game. Uh, we will, I will ship you some grab vouchers for courtesy of Intel. Uh, and after that, we will open for questions and answers uh, from the group. And I think, uh, you know, honestly, from I've been in Innovate Malaysia for a bit long. Uh, every time, you know, judges will ask, so what's the value of your product? Everybody will say, oh, it's cheaper than what I can get in the market. Lah. <laughs> so, so I think in this time, hopefully we can get a bit better uh, answers, right? As you do your re your market research on the products that you're developing for Innovate Malaysia as well. Uh, we we'll definitely want to see a bit more of, um, how do you call it, uh, versatility kind of thing, right? Uh, uh, oops, I can't share sound in this, uh, this, uh, this thing. So let me just go ahead and share my screen. Wow, this is a very tough question. Huh? Hope that everyone get it right, this one. <laughs> tough, <huh? laughs> Yeah, it's been paying attention. I was trying to pick some of the stuff on your foil. Uh, tough, tough question, unless the fella got the leak. Huh? So, <laughs> lambo <laughs> <laughs> At least I ask Google, Google will tell you. The the speed of how you uh, enter also will, will, um, will impact the score. So the faster, the better. Ah, yeah, this one is a really tough question. <laughs> this one is also tough. Oh, 
All right. The thing I want to maybe ask is, you know, folks, as you you are going through the judging, we did this virtual judging this year. Um, so are we all are we all ready for for the virtual judging? And, and I think this to give a bit of inspect. That's why I want to bring in uh, uh, Dr. Mu when we talk about business and the view of it's not just technology. Oh yeah, we can make you know this very impressive AI product, but uh, we, we I think we we find a, a lot of trouble trying to sell this as well. Right, so if, if you know we, we could come out, put some thoughts into your uh, project when you present it from all this um, uh, business modeling, right? Uh, business acumen modeling that would be great. Gives a bit more um, uh, thought to it, lah. Right. Any any questions? Any anybody on the chat? Questions? Uh, hello. Yeah, go ahead. Oh hi. So my name is Idlan, and uh, I'm part, I'm one of the participants for IMDC. Um, yeah, uh, I heard you said just now there was that one popular question in the Q and A sessions, especially um, the what is the value of our product. So um, I guess I would like to know from your opinion, I mean, what is the uh, more? I mean, what's the actual? You know, like what would be a good way to approach that question because you said something about like versatility maybe you could go a bit more specific on that sb maybe i'll pass it to you if somebody asks right hey i've got this nice invention and then you you ask back so what's the what's the value how, how would you answer that yeah so just now i talk about the business acumen time right uh one of them is to really understand the problem statement from your end user when you do the market monitoring right so you understand what is your customers your your stakeholder wants so if you are able to address the problem statement or the pain point that is actually turned out to be the new value for your product so the value doesn't really come in quantity or quality uh, you know, measurements. It's just that how do we able to really uh, address the pain point of problem statement? That is actually equivalent to the value that they will really appreciate. And that is in short. Lah. In long term, I, I think we have to be sit down here to explain even furthermore. So I guess when you introduce a product and say, oh, this is catered for, let's say, uh, the China market, but you know, um, or all the the features are not really usable in China, especially if you say, for example, I do this where you need to run YouTube, right? But you know, YouTube is not open in China, so obviously that doesn't meet your um, customer needs, right? That, I think that's the point. Just now I give it an has example. To be also aligned. on yeah on the education one, right? So if you introduce the smart uh, TV or smart interactive whiteboard in the 20 years ago, you don't really appreciate that. Uh, but today, people will appreciate that. They see the value of that because uh, it can help them to do the hybrid uh, teaching model. Um, and if that's the case, then is there like a sort of future projection that we can do? Because um, like you said, um, that sort of technology wasn't that popular back then. But now, I mean, but now it's suddenly important. So is there a way to actually project that sort of thing? Mm, very good. Good question. Uh, just now I use the model called Potter 5 uh, 9 forces, right? So typically you can see from the, you have to be very react very fast, of course. You have to look at what is a market uh, situation. And we do this market uh, environmental scanning on and off. It means that you have to do it from time to time. When the market, uh, you know, the situation change, whether regulation, whether the market, whether the situation, like even whether the pandemic, so the situation change, you have to really analyze it very fast and react to it. Of course, that if you ask you to do a crystal ball 20 down years down the road, it's very tough, right? But at least that you have to be able to kind of dissect it into one to three years time or three to five years time, that kind of, of uh, range. Hope that answer your question. Um, can I just add something? I think it learned it's a uh, it's not a literal kind of question where how how what is your value? It's not really always about money. It's about maybe the 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 value you bring to to a certain community or to a certain group of people, or or if it's useful to them. It's not really about how much is it worth. So so the question, so I think the example that Dr. Ngo gave just now was 
typically people always respond with, oh, it's cheaper. But is cheaper always better? Like, is it is that a pain point that people that we all need to solve for? Maybe sometimes it's not that you need it to be cheaper, that kind of situation. So you, you, it's not a literal kind of question sure. where what is your value? What what you know? It's not about money. It's not monetary. All right. Thank you very much for clarifying. Good one.